Good morning, sir. Are you being served or are you just looking? I am looking for someone to serve me. Ah, well, in that case, I'm free. What's it to be? Jacket, trousers or a new woolly pulley? I bought these socks last week. They've only been washed once and look. <laughs> They're supposed to be non-shrink. Ah, yes. I see what the trouble is, sir. They're pure wool, you see. Now, very often, pure wool socks are made from two different herds. I mean, you might get one herd come from the Shetlands, the other down in Cork. <laughs> now, the Shetland knot won't shrink because they're standing in the rain all day. <laughs> so this must be the Cornish sock, and that's the Shetland one. Well, what are you going to do about it? I shall get in touch with the Cornish farmer and get his sheep sent up to Shetland. <laughs> I want my money back. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. <laughs> This gentleman wants his money back on account of the fact that his socks have shrunk in the wash. Oh, I see. Did you wash them yourself, sir, or did your wife wash them? I live alone. Oh, I see. <laughs> what did you wash them in? In the bath. <laughs> yes, I mean, what did you use to wash them with? Well, water. Water. <laughs> you can go to coffee if you like, Mr. Lucas. This is going to take some time. <laughs> it's OK. This case has my full attention. Was it hot water, sir? Well, of course it was. <laughs> well, you see, it should have been Luke. It says so on the instructions. Luke. <laughs> but I can't read that. It's too small. Well, of course it is. It's shrunk. <laughs> I want my money back. Yes. Well, our senior assistant, Mr Goldberg, will have to make that decision. Mr Goldberg, are you free? At the moment, Mr Humphreys, yes. <laughs> This customer of Mr. Lucas has failed to follow the washing instructions on the sock and it's shrunk and he would like his money back. What is your decision, Mr. Goldberg? <laughs> Mr. Goldberg always makes these decisions. We must give the customer his money back, Mr. Humphreys. Certainly, Mr. Goldberg. On one sock. <laughs> and if you're not satisfied with the goods, bring them back with the receipt and ask for your money back. You won't get it, but you can ask. <laughs> now, what's this big news you had to tell me? Today is a very special day. And what's so special about today? Today's the day my pussy comes of age. Oh, I mean, it's 21 years since you first had it. No. <laughs> Three years since I first had her. You see, in cat life, one year counts as seven. So that means she's 21 today. Oh, are you going to give her the key and the door? No. Anyway, she doesn't need it. She's got a little flap. <laughs> Do you want to see what I've got for her? Oh, yeah. Well, a leg of southern fried chicken. <laughs> and a mink collar with a little bell. <gasps> Is that real mink? Oh, of course. I wouldn't give her imitation. That's made of cat. <laughs> And a record of Lena Zavaroni. Oh, is that her favourite? No, but it's the only way I can get her to go out when it's raining. <laughs> and something she's been looking forward to for ages. A clockwork mouse. Oh, let's see it go. Well, where's Captain Peacock? Oh, he's not here yet. Oh, well. Sweet. <laughs> oh, oh, dash. Oh, where's it gone? I can't see it. Well, listen, and we might be able to hear the clockwork. Oh, it's like Peter Pan and the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I stuffed a pineapple in the hole, you see, and I said, give me a ring tomorrow and let me know if it's stopped. What? Ah! There's a mouse round my drawers. <laughs> there it is, eh? It's clockwork. Is this another of your jokes, Mr. Lucas? Not guilty, Captain Peacock. I am in no mood for practical <laughs> jokes. Now, what idiot released this mouse on the floor? <laughs> I shall count to ten, and if no one owns up, we shall remain behind after the store closes until this matter is resolved. One, two, Three. Own up or I'll four, tell on you. Three, you wouldn't five, do that. Yes, I would. I've got a date tonight. Seven, Sneak. Seven, Get your hand up. No. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Slocum, am I to understand that you are the miscreant? The what? <laughs> the person who released this object. Well, yes. I don't want any excuses. I shall confiscate this. If you wish to retrieve it, you will find it in Mr. Rumbold's office. There's been far too much laxity on the floor of late. 
You're all getting very sloppy. Captain Peacock, I've been over 40 years in various retail outlets and I've never been called sloppy. An egg stain on the tie. What? Three waistcoat buttons undone. A frayed cuff. I call that sloppy. Oh, Mr. Goldberg, I've never heard a senior assistant spoken to like that in my life. Hmm? Have I got egg stain on my tie? Well, not a big one. <laughs> well, I have to have these three buttons uh, undone on my waistcoat, otherwise I can't breathe. What about the frayed cuff? Well, Mrs. Goldberg was going to turn it. Uh, oh, dear, she has. <laughs> I've never known him go on like that. I think there's something wrong with him. Perhaps he's had another row with Mrs. Peacock. You know, like last time, we threw the custard all over him and made him sleep in the spare room for a week. Yeah, well, if I was married to Mrs. Peacock, I'd sleep in the spare room all the time. <laughs> he's definitely not well. His nostrils are all drawn. <laughs> Is that bad? Mm. Well, our milkman's horse had drawn nostrils. <laughs> One morning, it dropped dead in the shafts. <laughs> You're not suggesting that's going to happen to Captain Peacock, are you? Well, let me put it this way. If he delivered my milk, I'd order an extra three pints. <laughs> I can reassure you it's not as serious as that. <laughs> How do you know what it is? I just do. I was told in the strictest confidence yesterday. Well, you can tell us in the strictest confidence today. Look, it's a very delicate matter. Mr. Goldberg, anyone who knows me will tell you that I am not a gossip. <laughs> It'll go no further. <laughs> but I did give my word. He made you look very small over those frayed cuffs. Yeah, true. Mm. And it was very unnecessary to mention that egg state. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Well, apparently, he went down to see Mr. Franco in the sports department. He, he wanted some jogging shorts. <laughs> you know how vain he is. Well, he would be satisfied until he tried three lots of shorts. But then during the process, Mr. Franco noticed he had a boil. <laughs> a very large boil. <laughs> Where? I didn't notice a boil on his thumb. <laughs> on his thumb. <laughs> well, I think Captain Peacock's gone mad. I mean, <clears throat> just because I used a felt-tip pen on me bill pad instead of a biro, he went all up at... at um, <laughs> what do you call it when they go all red and swell up and their eyes pop out? Apoploptic. Yes. <laughs> well, all I did was use the wrong finger to ring up the two. And I got a no-sale. Which finger did you use? It's immaterial. <laughs> when he saw that little red flag, he came charging over to me. He went mad for about five minutes. I thought the veins in his neck were going to burst. They were standing out like spaghetti junction. <laughs> Mind you, having a boil where he's got one, well, it must be painful. I'm sure we all feel for him. You speak for yourself. This is justice. <laughs> he's been rotten to me ever since I came here, and I've had to take it sitting down. Well, now you've got your revenge, because he can't take anything sitting down. <laughs> Please, please, please. Shh, shh. Keep your voices down. Shh. We don't want this thing to spread. Why? Is it catchy? <laughs> Look, will you listen? I told you in the strictest confidence. Now, please, people can be very sensitive about boils. So I must ask you, even for my own sake, don't mention anything about it while he's here. I won't say a word. I wouldn't be that cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there, Captain Peacock? A cup of tea. No, I meant that thing on your arm. Oh, this. Yes, yes. It, it's a rubber ring. The medical department have had a lot of complaints recently about the poor quality of rubber, and I volunteered to test it for a few days. <laughs>
test it, you want to treat it a bit rougher than that, you know. You want to bounce up and down a bit. <laughs> that will come later. <laughs> I must say that any resemblance between that and tea is purely coincidental. That's because they never bring the water to the boil. <laughs> hilarity this morning. <coughs> I suppose, as usual, I shall be the last one to know what caused it. <laughs> <coughs> Just because I'm reading the paper, it doesn't mean that everybody has to has to stop talking. Well, I wasn't stopping. No, 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 I was talking about Mr. Arthur. He's not talking. Oh, we're having quite a good, uh, amiable chat. <laughs> There's a very good article in that uh, paper about the, uh, the uh, great train robbery. Oh, yes, I was reading about it in the bus. Standing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it was full as usual. It's my theory that most of the money finished up in South America. Yes, I doubt if they'll ever get to the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I expect they will in the end. <laughs> No use trying to hide your sniggering, Miss Brahms. You know, don't you? No, what, Captain Beaker? <laughs> About my... my misfortune. How did you find out? Somebody told me. <laughs> oh. Mrs Slocum! <laughs> Who told you, Mrs Slocum? I'm not one to tell tales. However, since we're all sneaking today, Mr Lucas. I knew Mr Lucas would be in, in this thing somewhere. Who told you? Wild horses wouldn't drag that information from my lips, Captain Peacock, but I will point. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Mr. Goldberg. I'm surprised at all of you. Hitherto, I had regarded you as my friends. I, I, well, I, I'm sure I speak for everybody here that uh, I'm very sorry to have caused you such distress. But what I want to know now, Mr. Goldberg, is who told you? Well, I was told in the strictest confidence, uh, and I can assure you it'll go no further. Your secret is safe with us on the third floor. Hmm? Hello, Captain Peacock. Yeah, they're all asking after you in the packing department. <laughs> How's the boil on your bum? <laughs> uh, sorry I was delayed. Now then, what's all this about, Peacock? Well, sir, this is a matter of some delicacy. I'm suffering from a minor but painful indisposition. Oh, do you mean the boil I heard about in the news? <laughs> yes, sir. I have a complaint. Yes, a very nasty one, too, I should <laughs> No, sir. I wish to complain. I've been made a laughing stock throughout the store, owing to a grave breach of confidence by a member of another department, to wit, Mr. Franco of Sports. Yes, well, come to the point, Peacock. It all occurred in the fitting room, and everyone knows that the first rule of sales etiquette is that what one sees in the fitting room is in the strictest confidence. Oh, that's very true. While I was trying on a pair of jogging shorts, Mr. Franco became acquainted with my affliction and banded it about the store. Yeah. Well, obviously, I thought you'd released the news yourself. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if it was just us, but when it gets down to the packing department, that's too much. I feel most strongly that Mr. Franco should be reprimanded through official channels and should make a proper apology. I think he should write it out and put it up on the staff notice board. I don't think I'll ask him to go that far. <laughs> no, there might be one or two people who haven't heard yet. My first instinct was to go and punch him on the nose. But because this whole affair brings Grace Brothers into disrepute, I feel it proper to go through official channels. I quite agree. I shall phone Mr. Franco at once. Thank you, sir. I mean, I wouldn't have dreamt of passing it on had I known that the information was obtained in the fitting room. Yeah, we never said anything about that big blonde that came in with the limerick tattoo, Donna. What was that? Um, there once was a couple of rockers went out with a bird with big... <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr Franco, <clears throat> uh, Rumble here, third floor. Uh, I have Captain Peacock here with me. Oh, you heard? Yeah, well, he feels that you owe him an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should take that line. He feels very strongly about it. 
His first instinct was to come down and punch you on the nose, and he is quite capable of it. In passing, you might mention that I was the welterweight runner-up for the RASC at Mercer Matru. <laughs> <laughs> he was the welterweight champion of Mercer Matru. I assure you, he is not bluffing. Look, he comes from a background where a gentleman takes a person like you down to the gym, puts on the gloves and gives you a damn good hiding. I see. He accepts the challenge. <laughs> Five rounds, that's okay with us. Yeah. <laughs> He'll go ten if you like. <laughs> right, very well then. Saturday afternoon, three o'clock. You. <laughs> Down! Flexing his muscles. Ooh, isn't he marvellous? I'm going to ask him to sign this bill. Captain Peacock. <laughs> are you free? At the moment, Mrs. Slocum. Would you sign this bill for me? But it's blank. You haven't sold anything. I know. I just wanted your autograph. <laughs> We'd like you to know that we in the ladies' department are very proud of you. We think what you're doing is marvellous. Me and Miss Brahms are seeing you from quite a different angle. And what we say is, if a man can't stick up for his honour, what can he stick up for? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Slicker. Look at him, he's basking in it. Well, if I was in his position, I'd like to think that I'd do the same thing. I wouldn't, but I'd like to think I would. <laughs> You know, I used to get into a lot of scraps when I was a lad. <laughs> I was known as Gruesome Goldberg, the Golders Green Gorilla. <laughs> oi, oi, you're doing all right, aren't you? Well, they do seem to admire a man who sticks to his principles. Oh, they admire you, uh, and they're very sorry for you. Like they admired the Light Brigade. Only a handful got through, but they admired them. Mr. Harmon, what are you trying to say? Word has it that Mr. Franco is very handy with his dukes. And when he was in the Navy, he boxed for his ship. A torpedo boat? An aircraft carrier. <laughs> Mr. Harmon, don't come on the floor in your overalls during working hours. In that case, I won't tell you about his secret weapon. What secret weapon? He's got a killer punch. In both hands. <laughs> uh, may I use your phone, Mr. Goldberg? I'd be most honoured, champ. <laughs> I'll get the number for you, Captain Peacock. I'm mad about his aftershave. <laughs> and probably splashes it all over. <laughs> Who do you want? Oh, Mr. Grace. A rather worrying thought has struck me. I hadn't obtained Mr. Grace's permission, and he may, of course, uh, not allow the fight to proceed. It's going to take place on Saturday afternoon. He won't know about it. Oh, we won't say anything. No, but as a matter of principle, I feel I ought to tell him. Thank you. <laughs> I can only see a bit of the pink from here. <laughs> quite a lot from here. <laughs> You're not going to make me rush it? No, no. Take all the time in the world. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr Grace, but Captain Peacock's on the phone for you. Oh. <coughs> Hello, Peacock. Uh, sir. What's all this I hear about you having a punch-up on Saturday? <laughs> oh, you've heard about it, sir. Well, I thought it only right to, to consult you because I felt that you may wish to ban it. Ban it? I'm looking forward to it. I've got a fiver on. Oh, I, I hope I don't let you down, sir. Not on you, on the other fellow. <laughs> you did very well in the interstore finals. Knocked out the heavyweight from Mother Care. <laughs> Peacock. Hello, Peacock. Peacock. Come on, Miss Brahms, let's get a good ringside seat. Well, where are the others? Oh, I don't know. They'll be coming. 
<laughs> that works. <laughs> Where's Captain Peacock? Is he still in the fitting room? He hasn't arrived at the fitting room yet. We haven't seen him since Friday night. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, my hero, I knew you wouldn't let us down. Thank you, Mrs. Locum. Of course I wouldn't let you down, normally. What? Well, as a precaution, I, I went to the doctor for a final checkup, and before I knew what was happening, he'd injected me with some antibiotics. What difference does that make? To my dismay, the doctor pointed out that after taking antibiotics, one mustn't drink or box. <laughs> my doctor's never told me that. Perhaps in your case, he thought it wouldn't apply. Does this mean you can't fight, Peacock? In a word, I'm afraid so. But the honour of the whole department's at stake. I mean, I accepted the challenge. All right, then you go and fight him. <laughs> oh, well, well, I can't fight, you see, because uh, I wear glasses. Well, take him off. If I do that, I, I can't see. <laughs> well, I hope somebody's going to fight him. I haven't given up my afternoon's bingo to see a lot of lily-livered fairies <laughs> making <it. laughs> uh, I would willingly step into the breach. If you think a man with one lung and a truss would be a bit... <laughs> no, no, no. We've got a couple younger than you. Yeah, but not in such good condition. <laughs> You're always talking big. Now's your chance to show how big you are. I would. Were it not for the fact that my poor old mother, for whom the slightest excitement could prove fatal, made me join this religious sect. Yes, yeah, called Cowards Anonymous. <laughs> Very nearly right. Only the other night I went to the meeting and I rolled up my left trouser leg and holding a dead chicken in my outstretched hand, I swore before the Eye Lama that I would do no violence to any living thing, animal, vegetable or insect. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I let this leaf with a caterpillar on it and I'm still doing penance. <laughs> what about you, Mr Humphreys? Oh, I've never boxed in my life. <laughs> now, wrestling, now that's another matter. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought you were the wrestling sort. I was known as Hugger Humphreys. <laughs> to pull me off, people. <laughs> I was the catches catch can champion of the Barleymore Road Mixed Infants. <laughs> well, it's all down to Miss Brahms or Mrs Slocum. And my money's on the heavyweight. <laughs> Weak as water. If I was a man, I'd be in there. You shouldn't have shaved your moustache off then, should you? <laughs> we should just have to postpone the match until Captain Peacock is better. Uh, I, I may be on antibiotics for life. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Well, uh, nice to see you, Mr. Franco, but I'm afraid we have some bad news. Uh, I think you ought to hear our bad news first. Uh, due to the size of Mr. Franco's hands, the sports department can't get a pair of gloves to fit him. Ah. Chickening out, eh? I'm not chickening out. I can beat you with my own hands. Well, do me wrestling? Anything you like. How about catcher's catch can? That's my favourite. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm only a boxing man. Chicken out. Certainly not. Stand, please. I'm not free. Oh, yes, you are. Get it. You can't come in here. This is a ladies' fitting room. Oh, no. Put me down. No. Me. No, put me down. No. Take your trousers off. Oh. I never thought those words could cause such mixed emotion. <laughs> Keep your hands off me. I thought you weren't supposed to harm anything, animal, vegetable, or insect. I didn't say anything about fairy cakes. <laughs> oh, I've never seen anything like this since Emmanuel II. <laughs> Take it off! Take your things off! Ow! You very nearly did. Hand! <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, <Hello. laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen. On the right, Mr. Franco from Sports Equipment. Right. Hey! On my left, Mr. Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys of Gents Ready Made. Yeah! This is the free round contest. Two falls or a submission to decide the winner, or the first of the two gentlemen to run away. <laughs> now, I want no unnecessary gouging or kicking with the point of the toe. Oh, no. Yes. No, not so. <laughs> I've never seen anybody so keen. <laughs> right. Any questions? Yes. Did you get that ribbon from Haberdashery? <laughs> Twinkle toes. Right, go to your corners and come out fighting when I bring the pearl. Now remember, Mr. Humphreys, you are standing up for the honour of the whole department. Well, you tell my legs that. <laughs> are you listening? I haven't got 
got much choice, have I? <laughs> no! You got any grudge against me? Well, of course not. I'm sure under other circumstances we could get on quite well. <laughs> in that case, all we got to do is make it look good. I'm entirely in your hands. <laughs> Here, have you ever seen a flying cross button? <laughs> not for a couple of weeks, no. <laughs> First thing we've got to do is whirl you around my shoulders and slam you onto the floor. They call it a propeller. Oh, what am I going to do? You're going to do an agonising yell. Oh, I think I can manage that. I think oh. you've done this game before. Mm, but not with so many people watching. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> now, now I'm going to show you a Patagogan nose hole. Oh. <laughs> it looks absolutely oh. ghastly. <laughs> Isn't it time I got you into something? No, no. They've got to hate me first. Oh. And then when you get your revenge, they're going to love you. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Don't forget to yell. They are. They're hating me now. Yeah. I'm not so keen on you myself. <laughs> get out of here. Just remembered. What? A Brazilian elbow jam. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> Harmon, when a man has a boil on his bum, he'd better belt up! <laughs>